Hi, my name is uh, Senior Master Sergeant Phil Polson. I'm with the 146th Airlift Wing, Channel Islands Air National Guard Station, California. I'm here for annual MAFS refresher training. What is your job on a MAFS? Uh, I'm a load master, so I operate the MAFS system on the back of the air. That is uh, loaded in the back of the aircraft. So what does a load master do? Uh, well, we start off, we load the system. We uh, load it onto the aircraft. It, uh, it's a roll-on, roll-off capability, so it can go on any one of our airframes. Um, we load it in the airplane. Uh, and along with maintenance, we install it, hook it up, do all the things that need to be done. And then once we get ready to do the actual MAFS mission or training in this case, we, uh, we service the unit with water and with, uh, with air to uh, get it ready for, for dropping. And then once in flight, we operate the system in flight. And what do you do when you're inside the aircraft and it's all loaded? So, so basically, the, uh, it's a 3,000 gallon tank that holds water or retardant, wa water in this case for training, retardant during the fire season. And it has two very large air pressure spheres. Uh, we take that, we operate the system, we charge it all up, load it with the water, load it with the air. And then uh, when it comes time to drop, we arm the system, which takes that, that thousand, takes that thousand, 1200 PSI air and puts it into the top of the, air, uh, top of the tank at about, about 100 PSI. And so when the pintle retracts for the drop, we pull the trigger to make the pintle retract, the retardant comes out, that pressurized air pushes the fluid out. And how do you know when to do that, when to pull the trigger? Uh, the pilots will call ready, ready, drop. So they're behind the lead plane, they're flying along. Lead plane is going to tell them a spot. We want you to drop this line of retardant from, from this spot here to this spot along this path. And they see it once they get it to the position. They say ready, ready, drop. We all pull the trigger and out the stuff goes. And what capabilities does the pilot have? as far as the retardant system itself. Do they have any way they can to trigger the drop? The co-pilot also has a trigger that mimics ours. They have the same trigger that we do up in the front. So they can do the actual drop or the emergency drop if, the, if that is needed. Who would normally do the emergency drop? Uh, it's our responsibility as a loadmaster to uh, be the primary for the emergency drop, but either of the two crew positions can do that. And what might require an emergency drop? Uh, you lose an engine. Uh, weather pushes you into a bad position. Uh, you just have to get rid of the load to make the aircraft lighter for a better uh, aerodynamics and flying. So how do you like flying these mass missions? Uh, it's very rewarding. It's, uh, it's nice to be able to give something back. There are, uh, we, we've done a lot of really cool things. Um, remember one time we were fighting fires up in uh, Klamath Falls and uh, there was a grassland fire area and it was just going towards this cabin out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, we came up and we dropped three lines to box it around the cabin. And you could see the aftermath that the flames had gone just around the cabin and the cabin stood. All the other grassland was gone. So it's rewarding things like that. We're uh, saving lives and structures. How long have you been working with the MAFs? Uh, I've been in the unit for 30 years and uh, I've been doing MAFs for about 27. You're a National Guard, right? You're I'm the Air National Guard. Guard, correct. What do you do when you're not with the National Guard? I work full time for the Air National Guard. Oh, so when I'm not with the Air National Guard, I'm I'm a father, a husband, sports fan. And you're from? I'm originally from Boston. And you're working out of? I work Channel Islands, California. It's uh, on the coast, halfway between LA and Santa Barbara. Is there anything new this year with the MAP system? Uh, with the MAP system itself, no, nothing's new on it right now. There are some plans and development they're gonna do to improve the system, but uh, those aren't ready yet. And what might those be? Uh, Operability, make it easier for us to operate, make it cleaner, easier for the maintenance folk to be able to fix it, uh, things like that. How long does it take to install the maps in a C-130? Uh, it's uh, it, about an hour or so, hour and a half, maybe two hours, depends. Sometimes it's tricky to get in. It's a, it's a very tight fit and there are some pieces that have to go into a, in a jigsaw puzzle type way that sometimes it gets a little complicated, but a good talented crew can do it in about an hour. Are you working with the H model or J model? Oh, we are the J model. C-130J. J. Mm -hmm. There's a little more room in the J, isn't there? Uh, we're 15 feet longer. And one of the upgrades that uh, the J-Mod brought with it. Better engines, more power, more fuel efficient, flies higher, faster, and carries more cargo. Is there anything else we should know about MAPS? Uh, it's a very challenging mission. It's, uh, it's very good to give back to the state, the community, the nation, and uh, we're all very proud to be here doing this. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.